I'm Mary Grothy, CEO of Sales BQ, and welcome to the Quota Crusher podcast. Today, I'm going to inspire you to ditch your old prospecting methods of singular focus prospecting, meaning I sent them an email, well, I called them, I left them a voicemail, well, I sent them a LinkedIn message, Okay, this one touch or two touch prospecting, it just doesn't work anymore. Not even a five or six touch prospecting campaign works. We manage sales teams all across the country. We have scorecards and metrics to track how many outreaches it takes to get a conversation and the conversion rate. And this is our proven method. And we know that it works. Are you ready to learn it? Here we go. Multi-touch profiling and prospecting. You create a campaign. It's a four week process and we recommend 16 touch points over four weeks, 16 touch points over four weeks. That type of persistence pays off and people will want to take a meeting with you, but you have to be very mindful. Here's a few things to make sure that you do or not do. One, it's not about you. Take out your name, your title, your company, your messaging must be very purposeful. Everything needs to be about them. When you profile, step number one, profile the company, profile the people, find all the key contacts and influencers, learn everything you can about that company, read what's in their newsfeed, look at the updates that they're posting, Google them, read about what's going on in the community or their industry and what they're doing to grow. Maybe there's opening a new location. Maybe there's some not so great news in their company that could potentially be a trigger event for you as well. Find a talking point. Don't get analysis paralysis and sit there and profile an account for hours. Just find a talking point. That's all that you need to do that first message outreach. My recommendation, connect with them on LinkedIn. No message, no message, no connecting and pitching. It's brutal, brutal. Do not do it. No connecting and pitching. Just connect, add them to your network. Then on their profile, you can snag their email address. There's also a million other methods out there to get email addresses. If you don't have them, just Google it and look it up. There's plenty of tools out there that it can scrape an email for you. Plus you can just make it up and put the other combinations in the BCC and one of them is going to go through. Okay. Moving on with that initial email outreach, your subject line is critical on that subject line. It should have their name in it or their company name in it. It should have one tiny little talking point. And then you have three lines on a preview. If you think about most people check their email on their mobile phone, look at how many lines are previewed in the email before you click on it. You, you literally have one sentence to catch their attention. It needs to be relevant. It needs to be about them. Otherwise swipe delete. Your email is going to get deleted. So think about it. You're not closing for the meeting on the first outreach. You're simply asking them a question. I want you to think of one engagement question that's going to get them to respond to you and start a conversation. Unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore to just do an outreach and try to close for an appointment. I want you to plant these seeds early on and we're going to go for the ask later down in the cadence. So you've got an email connection, then you have your initial email outreach. Then I want you to do, depending on your role, if you're inside sales, outside sales, if you're an SDR setting appointments, or if you're inside with an outside counterpart or whatever the setup, or if you're outside and you're doing all this prospecting and selling yourself, there needs to be a drop a step where something is physically dropped off at their office or you do a mailer hand write on the outside of the envelope, hand write, because people are going to open mail that is handwritten. I don't need you to hand write the entire letter, although it is a nice touch, but it might slow you down. I just need you to hand write on the outside of the envelope. So that's your third step. Then I want you to go back and leverage LinkedIn. Now that they've had a few days to hopefully connect with you, I want you to scrub mutual connections and see who you know that's mutually connected. I want you to pick two or three people that are your buddies and you're gonna say, hey, I'm going after this CFO. Can you please send just a note, a warm introduction and you have that CFO receive a few messages on your behalf and then you also have more in the cadence coming up. Now is when you're gonna make your first phone call. You get to reference the other touch points and you're not gonna say, hey, this is Mary at ABC Company, how are you? Cross that out. No more asking, how are you? Brutal. The worst thing you can ask. Just label, I'm a sales rep. You might as well just call and say, I'm a sales rep. Because nobody asks that question except for salespeople. So don't ask that question. You're going to call, you're going to reference, hey, I'm the one that sent you that email and dropped off the goodies at your office. Sorry, we weren't able to connect. Um, 
did you happen to read my note that I dropped off or see the email? No, okay, I'm not gonna make you dig for it. May I tell you what it said? Yes, they're gonna say, what did it say? You can also insert, may I tell you why I'm calling? They're gonna say, yes, why are you calling? Uh, psychologically speaking, the buyer just asked you why you're calling. They are now actively listening versus you just spewing that out when they answer the phone. So now you're going through that call if you are able at this point to engage and take that conversation to uh, getting a sales meeting, great. The one technique that works every time is by dropping that value prop and then as soon as they bite and they start to converse and say anything, I want you to respectfully cut them off. I'm not kidding. It is not your responsibility to sell them on the phone unless your role is to sell them on the phone and then continue forth with your sales script. If your responsibility is to set the meeting, I want you to trim it right there and you're gonna say, hey, you know, look, Mr. CFO, you were not expecting my call. I'm interrupting you. I'm gonna let you get back to your day. It sounds like we have something to talk about. Let's continue this conversation. Do you prefer early morning meetings or are you a lunch guy or later in the day? I can come by next week. Do you have your calendar in front of you? And then we'll continue this conversation and you're gonna close for that meeting. If you get voicemail, go ahead and leave a voicemail. I'm indifferent on voicemail. Leave a voicemail, don't leave a voicemail. I don't really care. I don't have any strategy for you there, but I've seen to prove out numbers either way, but then you're gonna to continue to work through the cadence. Now you're gonna send a second follow-up email. You're gonna do another drop. You're gonna now send them a LinkedIn message that's been a week asking them one specific question, something about their world. You are not asking for a sales meeting. You are not pitching. You are not talking about your products and services. You are creating a conversation and some point of engagement. It could be commenting on how long they've worked for that company. It could be asking them if they got uh, your email or the goodies that you drop by. It could be calling out where they used to work and saying, oh, I have a friend that works over there. has good things to say about the company. You're not closing them for anything. You're just creating a conversation. Then you continue the cycle, multiple emails, multiple touch points with the telephone and leveraging mutual connections, inviting them to a webinar or event, sending them another mail or some testimonials. But you're going to do 16 touch points over four weeks. And by the end of the four weeks, if you have not been successful getting a meeting with that company, then you need to move it out of the cadence. I promise you, especially if you did your job and you profiled this as a, maybe a major account or mid-market account, you have multiple buyers in there. So potentially you found five key contacts, so five times 16 touch points, that's a lot, over four weeks. And so this company knows who you are. And if they're not agreeing to a meeting, it is not the right timing right now. They are not interested, just let it go. But they all know who you are. You've planted the seeds internally and you're gonna then put, then put them on your callback list every three to six months. And you can resurrect that cadence or invite them to events, stay connected on LinkedIn, comment in the newsfeed on their post, congratulate them on work anniversaries, birthdays, you name it, now they're in your network. So keep nurturing that relationship until you can get the appointment. Ever since we implemented this with our clients and we had reps starting to follow it, Oh boy, our conversion to meeting through the roof. I'm Mary Grothy signing off. Hope you enjoyed your quota crushing sales tip for the week.